It's been a rough start to the year for Sneeko. Like always, he's managed to find himself in a bunch of controversy, and it all started on January 7th when he got into a beef with 27-year-old Mikey Musumichi. If you just go off appearances, Mikey doesn't seem very intimidating. He has that stereotypical nerdy look, and at just 5'7", 134 pounds, he's a pretty small guy. But his looks are deceiving because he's actually an extremely skilled and talented fighter. It's called an Aoki lock. It's a modified heel hook, but... Jiu-Jitsu is for autistic people. What I think of a master of jiu-jitsu is, is somebody that inspires another generation. Jiu-jitsu, I swear, this is why I like striking. This is so... And this is a competition where you just, it's a, it's an art and it's an art form, but I learned from the master. He looks like Mark Zuckerberg. He shouldn't be winning. So much credit. I did his move on him. So that's like a master to student. He's an idol of mine <laughs> for being... For it's like a master to the student of actually, this is a leg heel lock. Who knows why Sneeko went after him, but he does this sort of thing all the time. He probably didn't expect Mikey to respond, or he just didn't care if he did. But what he said really pissed Mikey off, and he posted a video response on Instagram. So today I'm gonna to talk about bullies. Bullies are weak people that make fun of others around them, that give themselves relevance, and they make themselves feel good. They pick on the differences of humans, which is the most beautiful part of humans, their uniquenessness. I really don't like bullies, guys. And there's this guy named Sneeko making fun of me, making fun of my friend, making fun of jiu-jitsu. He calls himself a boxer. I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. Let's have an MMA fight. I challenge Sneeko to an MMA fight. I'm going to shut his mouth and I'm going to take the bully's lunch money. The video got millions of views and Sneeko's fans began pressuring him to respond. They wanted him to get in a cage with Musumichi and have it out. But this would only ever go one way. You see, Mikey is an American submission grappler and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt competitor. He's a five-time world champion and Pan-American champion in colored belts. And is a five-time IBJJF black belt world champion. He was the first American to win more than one IBJJF world title at black belt. And currently, he's the flyweight submission grappling champion for one championship. This guy is no joke, and needless to say, he would flatten Sneeko in seconds, even with the size difference. Sneeko definitely knew this, but he promised to take up Mikey's offer anyway, under one condition. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey Musumasi, fine. I accept your offer. I will fight you in MMA, under one condition, because you accused me of being a bully, I called you a Mark Zuckerberg lookalike, and I've never seen a world champion accuse somebody with no experience of being a bully. But I accept, I understand why you're upset. One condition, because I don't need the money, I'm an active income. You need to tell your sparring partner and your lookalike, Mark Zuckerberg, to have a one hour conversation with me about who controls the world. And then I'll fight you, inshallah. I'll see you soon, Mikey. Look forward to it. Good way to back out of it without saying no. Don't decline, but say something they can't do or else you won't fight. This was one of the top comments on Sneeko's post and it's an interesting point. Sure, Mikey has a relationship with Zuckerberg and they spar together, but the chance of him convincing Zuck to sit down with Sneeko was pretty much zero. So by agreeing to take the fight only under this condition, Sneeko effectively said no while saving face. But going off other events we'll discuss in this video, I actually think Sneeko was serious and that he was prepared to take the beating. Either way, Mikey was not happy with his response. All right, so obviously Sneeko doesn't want to fight me. Adding in all these stupid stipulations he knows will never happen. Typical bully. They talk and they talk. Beyond the safety of their screen, or even in the bathroom, recklessly, and they never face consequences. There's so many people out there like him. My goal here was to stand up to a bully. Kids, get yourself into Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu so you can learn self-defense and you don't have to deal with idiots like Sneeko. Sneeko responded to this, but he didn't budge. One condition. I'm not getting paid. You're a world champion, and this was my first time ever training. I want to speak to Mark Zuckerberg for an hour about him. Bring that part up. Don't say that's a bunch of stipulations. You spar with him. You speak to him regularly. Let me have a conversation with him. I'm going to live stream it. That's it. It's not all these stipulations. I'm not asking for like weight things. I'm not asking for any clauses. I'm just saying I want to speak to your sparring partner, Mark Zuckerberg, live on a stream, and then I'll do MMA with you. Don't try to lie. You're going to call me a bully. This is fair. 
Ultimately, Mikey wasn't willing or able to deliver on Sneeko's demands, so the fight never went ahead, and the whole saga ended there. Sneeko came away from it looking pretty bad, and was even called out on the Joe Rogan experience for being a bully. What's ironic about the whole thing is that this entire beef started because Sneeko said jujitsu is for autistic people. And now, not even two months after he said that, he's posting streams where he's in the gym practicing jujitsu. It's impossible to take someone seriously when they flip flop on the things they say like this, and Sneeko does this all too often. From around the time his beef with Mikey started, Sneeko started hitting the gym regularly. He's been training in mixed martial arts and we've seen him sparring a fair amount. He's had numerous UFC fighters make appearances on his streams and they've all spent time teaching him a thing or two. Most of these guys have been really friendly and helpful, but one of them, not so much. Sean Strickland has a reputation for being your stereotypical tough guy. He's the type of person who will pick a fight with almost anyone, regardless of age, weight, or fight experience. And many people consider him to be a bully. He's known to go really hard in sparring, but it's unclear whether Sneeko knew this before agreeing to get in the cage with him. Just before their spar, Jake Shields, another mixed martial artist, warned Sneeko about Strickland. Do you guys have headgear? Yeah. Let's yeah. see if someone has one. Okay. No, I'm, gonna, listen, I'm gonna wrap up. <laughs> He's the best part of Sean, too. Oh my god. I don't think he realizes what he got himself into. Chat, should I do headgear or no headgear? You should do headgear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Strickland's not the nicest guy to spar, but whatever. Yeah, it's too, no, it's he, too late now. You're already in it. So yeah. at this point, it'll be good for you to go out there and get fucking... Let's train afterwards too, though. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. Just gonna, like, we'll do like some cardio after. Even though it was starting to sound like a pretty bad idea, Sneeko still decided to get in there with Strickland, and he did it without headgear. For the first few minutes of the spa, Sean allowed Sneeko to take shots at him while barely putting up any resistance. He kept talking to Sneeko, taunting him as he ate his punches. Stood next to each other, you can see just how much of a size difference there is between them. Sneeko looked like a kid in there, and Strickland was just toying with him. As the spa went on, Sean began counting down to when he would let loose. We got four minutes. As we get closer to the three minute mark, you're about to spill a significant more amount of pain. They should be setting it in right now, then nothing you can do can hurt me. And this is a moment that as you're realizing, you're about to have a really bad fucking day in the next minute. It honestly seemed like Strickland was taking some sort of sick pleasure in the whole thing, knowing full well what he was about to do. <laughs> Three minutes into the spa, he completely switched up and started wailing on Sneeko, throwing heavy shots that could have been seriously damaging. Oh. There was literally nothing Sneeko could do besides try to protect himself. People kept throwing in towels, but Strickland completely ignored them, and the fight only stopped when someone jumped in to break it up. It was really surprising that Sneeko didn't go down during that, because Strickland wasn't holding back. He came away with a bloody nose and some bruises, but it could have been worse. I mean, just look at this punch that landed flush on Sneeko's face. Even though he took a beating, this is one of the only dramas Sneeko has been involved in that he came away from looking good. People respected the fact that he stood his ground and didn't go down, even though he couldn't fight back. Strickland, on the other hand, got a lot of criticism, but unsurprisingly, he didn't care at all. You know, the thing about like sparring, I am not a good man. I tell you guys all the time, I make mistakes. I I do things I shouldn't do. I, I'm not a good man. I, I like to hurt people. We all know this. Like, I've never hid this fact. And when you spar like these guys that want to spar, there is no respect. You haven't earned it. You haven't like, you haven't proved yourself. You don't deserve not to get hurt. Yeah, no, I'd, if, if Forrest didn't jump in, I, I would have took your life if I could have. It's thought that Strickland is like this because of his upbringing. He was brought up in an abusive household with an alcoholic dad who terrorized his mother. And the trauma he suffered in those early years is what made him turn to fighting. I went through like pretty severe trauma yeah. as a kid. Like pretty fucked up trauma. Yeah. Well, like I could sit there and joke about it, but I would always miss school because my dad would get home drunk, start drinking at like six. He would get home at like seven and and like just be up until like three in the morning, just like just tell my drinking? mom, tell him drinking, tell my mom she's a whore, uh, he's gonna kill her. Like, and I'll never forget, like he would talk about like, like burning her face with acid. And mind you, I'm in elementary school. Uh, I'm in elementary school, right? So like, so that's a lot of responsibility than you feel probably just to like take care of your mom. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he'd always tell her that like, if you cheat on me, and she probably was cheating on him. If you cheat on me, I'm gonna like cut you up and put you in a bottle of acid and bury you. I remember like laying in bed. Like I remember I stopped believing in God, man. Like fucking, <laughs> like I had fucking, um, yeah, it's crazy shit, dude. Crazy shit, man. 
At this point in the conversation, it all got too overwhelming for Strickland and he sat quietly sobbing for a while. He then went on to share how he used to be so anxious because of everything going on that he would obsessively scratch his gums to the point that they would gush blood and he still has a hole in them to this day. He wanted out of the life he was living so bad that he considered the unthinkable. I remember like, like, you know, like you don't even know what it is when you're a kid. When you're really talking about suicide, like being a little kid, like laying in bed, like just, like, man, I'm just fucking, I'm done with this shit. You know, like, there can't be a God. When I talk about like, oh, I'd kill a man. It's like, you don't understand. You're like, when you go through that level of trauma, like you just view it a little differently. If it wasn't fighting, bro, I would be jail. I'd be in jail. Like, yeah. it, it's not like, like to have like, you don't understand. Like, I, I truly have a deep down urge to kill somebody. Like, I can't, it doesn't go away. With this context, it's a lot easier to understand why Strickland is the way he is and why he beat up Sneeko like that. Still, it doesn't excuse what he did, but Sneeko seems to have taken it on the chin. I kind of feel bad for him. Like, because I can tell that the, he's, very few fighters are fighting because they enjoy hurting people. But there's a phrase like hurt people, hurt people. The guy clearly has a, a trouble yeah, past yeah, yeah. and he, he's doing it because he genuinely like he wants to draw blood on people. Like he wants to get revenge for stuff that's happened. And I, I kind of feel bad for that because I know most fighters, they do it for the respect. Like guys like Habib, for example, or Islam, the, the Muslim fighters, they do it for like the honor, for the respect and like to fulfill their father's prophecies in order to, to show how great Dagestani and Islamic culture is. They do it for, for the honor of it. This dude is just like, comes from a troubled past and just wants to uh, just wants to hurt people. And so there's like different justifications um, for why. Even though the spa between Sneeko and Strickland got a lot more coverage, he actually came away worse off when he had a spa with Bradley Martin a few months earlier. Unlike Strickland, Bradley has little to no fight experience, but he is 260 pounds, which makes him a giant compared to Sneeko. One day, while they were training in Bradley's gym, they decided to have a spa. Sneeko didn't protect himself with headgear during this fight either, but he also didn't wear a mouth guard, which he did when sparring Strickland. As you can expect, he didn't put up much of a fight, and Bradley landed a lot of punches straight to his face. It's funny that Bradley managed to knock Sneeko down when Strickland couldn't. They continued for a bit longer before calling it quits, and it was only then that Sneeko realized he'd chipped his tooth. Bro, you chipped my tooth, Brad. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, Where'd it go? One, I two, spit it out, good fight. <sighs> me. As well as a chip, he also got a cut on his eyebrow. It's pretty clear Sneeko needs to be more careful with who he chooses to spar with. Fighting guys double your size who want to hurt you is never going to end well, especially when you don't take precautions by wearing protective gear. So from Mikey embarrassing him to Strickland beating him up, 2024 hasn't gotten off to a good start for Sneeko, but it gets worse. Everyone knows that Sneeko is a controversial character. He's permanently banned from YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok because of the many things he said online. And now he exclusively posts his content to Rumble. It's been over a year since he joined Rumble, and ever since he's been extremely active on the platform. On February 9th, he attended a power slap event they were hosting, along with many other big streamers and influencers. He streamed the whole thing, and some parts were pretty hard to watch. While he was in the lobby before before he entered the event, I show speed and Kai Sinat showed up. Sneeko noticed them and it looked like he was waiting to greet them, but they ended up walking straight past and didn't acknowledge him at all. It even seemed like Speed was mocking him when he turned around looking left to right. From the look on his face, you could tell this got to Sneeko, but he didn't mention it and just went into the event. He was in the VIP section and there were many other big names around. So after spending a bit of time watching the contest, he began networking. At one point, he stopped to watch a guy perform a magic trick and it was then, less than 40 minutes after he got in there, that security asked him to leave. He was escorted out of the VIP section while all the other influencers, most of which don't even stream on Rumble, were allowed to stay. It's unclear why he got the boots, but throughout the rest of the stream, he was either complaining about that or asking people why Kai, Speed, and others were ignoring him. Can I ask you a question, Mike? Yes, sir. Why do you think there's this uh, overall vibe of a lot of like industry people? They don't, they don't with me. What, what is that? And you must know. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really sure, bro. I don't. I think everybody probably has a different reason for it. I'm not quite sure. 
you, you know, I think you take shots at people, and when you take shots at people, obviously they're gonna mark that and they're mental A lot of people that I don't take shots at. I don't know. But also, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people too that just don't wanna be with somebody who's having conversations about the shit you're having conversations about. It's true Sneeko doesn't do himself any favors by always criticizing people and getting into beef. And the fact he's always bringing up hot button topics like the ongoing wars really puts people off. Most influencers don't want to be questioned about things like that or have debates on it. And who can blame them? At the end of the day, they're entertainers, not political commentators. But Sneeko can't seem to decide which he is. <laughs> you know the dumbest shit, I gotta be honest with you, is the fact that genocide is controversial. Like, being against genocide is controversial. Saying free Palestine, saying that what's happening right now, people getting bombed during the Super Bowl, while Taylor Swift is chugging a beer on live TV for your entertainment, they're moving people out of the Gaza Strip into another village just to bomb them even more. And saying that's wrong, saying children dying, saying genocide is wrong, is controversial. That's the fucked up part about this industry, that all these people need to be like, I don't know, I don't know, buy Prime. <laughs> INSANITY! These are important things to bring attention to, but if people choose not to talk about it, you can't crucify them for it. Sneeko comes across like he thinks he's better than guys like Kai and Speed because he talks about this stuff. They try to lump me in with these other influencers. I want to reiterate right now, I am not like these other niggas, man. I am not like one of these other influencers. I'm not them! You know, like, hey, here's the influencers, they put me on the other side. And I'm the one streaming on Rumble every day, every day. But they put these guys, Kai and Speed, they need to walk out the red carpet for them. I get it. I get it. They're not a brand risk. They're, you know, they, they're jumping around, they're dancing. They're not going to speak about anything that is going to cause a problem. Even though he tries to hammer home the point that he's not like these other influencers, it's undermined by the fact that he clearly seeks validation from them. Kai, when you got accused of a allegation, when last year, New Year's Eve, when they tried to accuse you of grape, who was there on stream defending you while everybody else was silent? While everybody else was like, what? I immediately defended you because I know that they try to do that to successful men. As soon as you get to the next path in life, they try to bring up some false allegations that I defended you, Kai. And then you walk right in front of me. Aiden, same thing when you got canceled. These people were not your friends. They only f when it's profitable for them. This whole influencer shit is like high school times 10. It's all the giant popularity contest. There's no loyalty whatsoever. They smile and do a little dance and bark, but none of them actually even like each other. What I find funny about Sneeko is that when he's out in public at these events, he comes across as mild-mannered and approachable. But when he's in the comfort of his own home behind his screen, he becomes a totally different person, shouting down the microphone and pointing the finger at people. Given he always does this, he can't be surprised when people stop wanting to be around him. Do you f Sneeko? No. Truth. Elaborate or no? There's no reason to. Mm, okay. That can't be very nice to hear. Even though Sneeko is stacking L's at the moment, it's not all doom and gloom. Despite being banned from most major streaming platforms, he's still being talked about all the time. So ultimately, he's succeeding at the one thing that's most important in the social media game, staying relevant.